the town approved Virginia regular council meeting August 10th, 2015 will come to order. This evening we have the pleasure of Bishop Nathaniel Jones of the Dominion Worship Center who has come to give us our invocation, which will be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance by Councilman Fisher. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to come together in the precious name. Lord, we come in this meeting, we pray, invite your presence to guide and lead this body of people, Lord, that have been chosen to lead this town. We pray, God, to give them strength and power, Lord, to do the thing that is pleasing to serving of this community in a mighty way. We thank you for our mayor. We thank you for our council. Yes. We thank you for the employees of this town. We pray, God, to bless this town. We pray, God, the vision of this town will continue to grow and to move forward according to your perfect will. Lord, we thank you for all that you have given this town down through the years. But God, we pray now, Lord, that whatever you do now, God, that we may receive it as a people. We thank you right now, Lord. We pray your blessing upon this community like never before. Let us be one in spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 from David Farley, who is the Director of Operations of Harvey Design Land Architects um, on the Forestry Grant. But I believe this afternoon um, he called that there was some sickness of uh, part of the staff and he was not going to be able to make this presentation tonight. We were hoping that it would be an informative presentation because we need the pertinent information of just what this forestry grant included so that council could further on down make decisions of how much money, how much in-kind, time and all that uh, we would be providing. Um, I believe, Mr. Walker, you said that he suggested that um, maybe a conference call tomorrow morning. Um, I don't know if... Um, I don't mean to put you on the spot, Vice Mayor, but would you maybe be available to, or do you, I mean, do you all, since it's a short notice, I can't. Oh, that's okay. another point. Okay. Um, I, I'm not trying to just single her out, but maybe if one of you could join us tomorrow, you know, one council person, because, yeah, yeah we just, <laughs> well, two at the max, because that's, all, that's only the legal part, but in case, there, there are so many questions that Wade and I had, and we really felt like the presentation would help us better understand just exactly what we were awarded and where to go from there and what it included. And uh, before we, you know, had to ask council to make more decisions on this grant. So that's why I was saying if, if, if you know, we could have one or two of the council people, you know, there for the conference call. Okay, delegation from the public and citizens comments. This is the time for anyone in the, um, the audience if you have a concern or just a matter of uh, um, something that you would like to say that it, you know we welcome you now. We have a quiet bunch tonight. Okay. In front of you, Council, you have your consent calendar, which are matters on the consent calendar that are considered routine and will be approved by one motion. Any item can be removed from the calendar at the request of the members of Council and may be voted on separately. Included are your minutes of the regular meeting held on Monday, July 13, 2015. The bill sheet which you have been given an addition to that will be needed to be included um, 
Tiffany gave you an addition. The original bill sheet was for $141,499.64. You received an addition of $6,659.33, which brings our total bill sheet uh, for today at $154,818.30. So, um, having um, expressed that, what is Council's pleasure? Is there any additions, corrections to the minutes? One thing on the minutes. Okay. Unless I'm not reading it correctly. Under the town attorney's report, you get down to the part about um, under town attorneys, one, two, three. The fourth paragraph talking about the invocation. It says invocation needing to be done by a guest and not a member of council, so it would, I don't think the light is, so it would not appear as a council. I just need to take that word out. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's not a big deal, but it is. <laughs> so we are going to delete the word light, so it would appear. Okay. Any other additions? <clears throat> Any questions on the bill sheet or the additions? I make a motion we approve the consent calendar with the corrections of the minutes and additions to the bill sheet. Second. Okay, it has been moved and seconded that we approve the consent calendar with the correction to the minute and the addition to the bill sheet. So all those in favor signify by aye. 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 Like opposed? Okay, motion carried. Thank you. Okay. Town manager. Yes, sir. Things have been positive for quite some time as far as we've been concerned on the sewer project up until last week. Uh, as most of you know, the town experienced a really unusual rain event. Uh, I personally haven't seen it rain like that so hard, so fast. Um, but it was a good test of what's going on in our, our system as far as what improvements have been made to date. Um, I've got some, some statistics and that type of thing to kind of show everybody rain. Rain started falling around 1 o'clock. Uh, and then within 35 minutes, we were experiencing extremely high flows in our sewer pump stations. Uh, and by 2.23 p.m., both our emergency holding tanks were in operation, and the station itself was within approximately 20 minutes of overflowing. We did not overflow. Uh, we did have one manhole that discharged uh, in the east end and one in the west end that discharged. Uh, the rain stopped about 1.55. Uh, we got almost three inches within that period of time. Uh, by 3.15, the pump station shut down and everything was back to normal. So, uh, on the one hand, this is the same problem that we faced in the past uh, with extremely high levels of, of rain and water at one time. This one was a little bit heavier than we experienced but it still points to the fact that we've still got an issue. Um, the, the situation with I&I, &I, as you will remember, we had, we had inflow and we had infiltration. That's what I&I &I stands for. Infiltration is basically uh, cracked laterals, cracked lines, holes in lines, uh, things that would more or less show up say next day or the day after that in a situation where maybe we get a week's worth of rain or we have a lot of snow melt. This particular situation was inflow. Inflow is uh, pretty much storm drain connection, uh, downspouts on the houses, something that causes a, an extreme rush into the system. We had hoped that we we're resolving all these issues with everything that's been done, but this sort of proves that we have not. So 
Uh, we did some smoke testing uh, in the east end. We did not find anything major, which is what we're looking for. We have been in touch with the, our engineers to let them know that we feel like there's some more work that needs to be done. We've got to find this type of situation. It's a mystery right now, and it's uh, it's a real problem. And that type of an event may not happen very often, but we basically don't want any overflow situation regardless of what it is. And this proves that we've still got a problem. Um, so we probably will be in, we'll end up going back to a smoke testing situation, which we've done in the past a couple of times uh, since I've been town manager. And basically what you discover is that you've got a lot of, I don't like to use the word illegal <coughs> connections, uh, that's the official term, but these are connections that I would say 90% of what we find is on private property. Uh, it's my lateral and your lateral. Uh, it's the house is connected to the sewer system as far as a sump pump or a basement drain. Uh, the smoke identifies these type situations, which is a good thing. The bad thing is trying to figure out how to get people to fix it. Um, that's where I think this time around we probably won't have to have Tessie's input. Um, I personally would like to make it as simple as possible. She's told me we can't do this before. But if a house has an illegal connection, uh, you give them a specific amount of time to take care of it. If they don't, then we just continue town services. That would get you an know, immediate response. Um, she don't like that, I know. But, um, of course, the other thing is, is I'm sure she would say, uh, go to court, get a court order, that type of thing. Um, some of you will recall that at one time we were paying for this type of repair. The town had a fund set aside that was assisting people. Uh, we had a lot of people that took advantage of it. We had a lot that didn't. Um, but it's something we're going to have to address because we have not found this type of a, a situation. The uh, Tri-State has TV'd every line in the East End. Um, we, just, we just don't have this type of situation, so we've got to figure it out. We found a bunch of things the other day, but they were in a combination may cause this, this problem. But uh, for example, someone might have a clean out on their line that was busted, say a lawnmower, and, a, and there's an open hole there. Uh, we did find a couple of those, but this this type of situation is, is big and it's fast. In fact, at this time it went away as fast as it did to me. Proves that once it quit raining and the level somewhere, either in a drainage ditch uh, or a storm drain, when the level fell off, then so did the level in our, in our uh, pump station. So it's very discouraging because we're almost at the end of this project and I have no doubt that infiltration is, has been solved or, or helped a great deal, but we've still got this particular issue. And uh, we just got fired from you. It's just one of those things. <clears throat> we have involved the engineers. We talked to the two finance agencies briefly, had a, had a discussion with them. Uh, they're concerned as well because they've got a vested interest. And uh, I think we'll, we'll figure this out. You know, we've got, I think we've got to be steadfast this time. And once we locate these things, we've got to make sure that they're correct. And I know it's a burden on people, and I realize many of them inherited it. They bought a house. They didn't know they had these connections, but it's something that's, that's got to happen. So hopefully we'll be able to help them in some way. Uh, and it's something we have to get straight. Uh, I think I've covered that as much as I can. <clears throat> uh, I guess we'll get the view testing and, and see what options we have. We have the ordinances on board. Everything we need. It's just a matter of figuring out how we're going to do it. Um, to follow up on a few items, uh, I had asked the county building inspector to take a look at the old theater building on Main Street. You know, a lot of us have been concerned about that. 
individual structure and find out if it could safely be demolished or brought down. He suggested hiring someone else to look at it, like our engineers or another engineering firm or consultant to come in. And the concern is that the, the wall is connected to the, the building uh, adjacent to it, which is operating right now and owned by Larry Lynch. There's a uh, grocery store on the first floor. So the concern is that if we go to moving structure, or we compromising his, his building? got to find that out. Uh, at the very least, I think we've all agreed, the ones that have looked at it, there's a couple of trees growing up in the back that need to be taken down. Uh, they may in themselves compromise the structure. So I'm trying to get in touch with the owner uh, and I've not been successful. The telephone number was disconnected. <coughs> so I've got to keep trying to get in touch with him. The owner, I feel like he probably will let us do that. Uh, I'm not sure that we can do it. We may have to hire somebody to do it. I'll keep everyone informed. <clears throat> have we looked into the, uh, if there are any liens on that property? There, there are some uh, tax liens. Yes. Uh, federal? Or? Federal. But we, being the ones that have discussed it, feel like we could probably contact them and have them uh, forgive that. Right. I think if we get in touch with the owner and discuss it in the proper way, that there's a possibility that he may turn that property over to the town and then we can go in and have something done. I think that would be the uh, best way to get it. Uh, uh, first, either or, way, he's going to be told that it's got to be done. Uh, and it would be in his best interest, I think, to do that. Right. And I'm not sure the best way of going about it, but to have them give it to us under the condition that we can get those liens forgiven yes. first. Yes. I would rather, yeah, I would rather we get the liens forgiven prior to them giving it to us and then any other liens, you know, make sure all of those are clear before we accept it at all conditionally. Um, along those lines, and I think Tessie was probably going to question about John, but in her uh, email. We were successful on the 20th of uh, July. Uh, we received a court order that gave us permission to remove the structure. We clean up the property at 305 East Carolina Avenue. Uh, we do have to wait 21 days. So we're good after today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, after today, next week, we'll start advertising for someone to come in and give us a bid on taking it down. Uh, we will be sure that whoever does that is in compliance and knows what they need to do with regard to asbestos and that type of thing. Uh, that will be part of the process. And I hope we can serve the bid and get that taken care of. Uh, it will be interesting to see the bid, the cost. But we need to see this because this is where we're in with some of these properties. And Good to know what kind of money we're talking about. I have a question for the town manager. Is there any point, is there any uh, particular point in a time where you notice that, say, something like trees are coming up through a building that we feel that it is such a hazard that we have to, can we legally go ahead and take them down if we feel it's such a hazard supposed? Hurricane or something, and, uh, you know, because things seem to get so. I guess it depends on, on the situation. In, in this particular building uh, is abandoned and hasn't been anybody in it for years, uh, and hasn't been used for any particular reason. Uh, if you had someone that you were approaching that was living on the property, you would probably have to give them due notice in some way, shape and form, and, and give them time to take it down. Uh, treat it pretty much like a risk uh, situation. Right. Yes, unless we can, there is a provision, and I would need to review it to see if it would suit this purpose, but there is a provision under the 
uh, building code that the town has adopted for imminent danger, like very mm -hmm. serious things. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it may fall under that, or it may need to fall under, you know, giving notice and things like that. Any questions for the town manager, council? Mm -hmm. okay. Moving on, town attorney's report. Yes, thank you. And for the most part, Wade has told you all what I've been doing this past month, and the biggest thing was getting the court order to clean up the property and to remove the building at 305 East Carolina. So that was good. Um, working on a few other things, I also wanted to point out the zoning ordinance. We've been working on the home occupation requirements and regulations. I reviewed the latest draft today and that is fine. Um, there was a question that was posed to me regarding conditional use permits because when I had originally drafted and with every draft I've done since then, I have made the recommendation that home occupations can be approved, you know, these new home occupations can be improved with a conditional use permit. What a conditional use permit is, is it is a permit that the town government would adopt that would put certain restrictions on the person that was applying for a home occupation. Um, over and above, you know, the restrictions that are currently listed in the um, ordinance. And the reason why I suggested that is just so if the town is going to allow home occupations that the town be able to have some oversight over each specific home occupation. Um, the way that a conditional use permit is applied for, generally what happens in you know, the town could, I actually have some examples of some applications for conditional use permits that have come from other governing bodies that the town could get. And the person fills out, fills out an application, puts them their proffers or what their conditional use is, what they think they should be. Um, after that, the zoning administrator would review it, take it to the planning commission, Planning Commission will look at it. The Planning Commission can, you know, say, yes, this looks good. I like what the owners recommended. Or the Planning Commission can say, no, you know, I want to tweak it a little bit and, you know, make some changes on the conditions. After that, the Planning Commission would make a recommendation to town council as to what it thinks town council can do. And it would just be a recommendation. And then there would be there would be a pl public hearing with town council. People would talk on it, and then town, town council would either accept the planning commission's recommendation, or it could you know change some conditions, and then it would be issued. <coughs> In summary, it's kind of, it's a lot like anything that goes through the zoning process. You know, either it has to go to the Board of Zoning Appeals or the Planning Commission, and then it would need to be approved by council. So. There would almost need to be a fee charged for it in order to cover the um, the advertising and yes. all that. You would have to have a fee to cover costs, so it would break even. That's a good point, too. A lot of localities do charge a fee. So in other words, the application wouldn't be complete until the person has to pay the fee. So is that in addition to the change in the discussion? That would be in addition to the changes to the home occupation ordinance. And so of course, you know, it's up to council. If council do not require that level of supervision over every home occupation, Council could certainly make the um, home occupation a use of right with, you know, just the restrictions that we're going to put in the order and no conditional use permit. I, so, just, I don't see, I'm having trouble seeing why you would need both. You know, you've got guidelines for home occupancy and you know, all the women, you won't be 
been washed in oil. And then follow that up with the you can't apply for conditional use. I'm confused. I, I believe the, uh, the thought of the Economic Development Committee was uh, some of the things that we were looking at uh, using the, uh, the ordinance that we uh, that was sent to us. Um, there, there are some things that we would be restricting, but we may want to allow uh, for un under special uses. Under so allowing individuals a an opportunity to apply and get around the, uh, the solid. You can't do this. Or to show reasonably why it would not affect the neighborhood. Exactly. Like uh, for for example, uh, we were looking at um, in R1 district, uh, we don't allow schools or educational uh, areas. Uh, one thing we were talking about amongst ourselves was what if a, uh, uh, an individual wanted to just teach piano in her, in her home, you know, one or two students a week, uh, would we allow that? According to the ordinance, we would not. There, but is there a process that's not too bureaucratic that they can go through and apply to, uh, to do that. Well, what I have heard is that each year there's a fee in the R1 that no one charge like that. Some of the communities charge the fee even though they're paying the business license to they have to apply each year for that, that license to, to operate in all of them. They ain't like five books. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that would be up to the council. Mm -hmm. Certainly you all could, you know, set limits on this conditional use permit comes up from renewal every year. You could do that in the conditional use permit. You know, so that the council would be able to control the level of review that they had. Council could also say, you know, this condition use permit is going to be reviewed in five years. So it's completely up to, you know, council what sort of level of scrutiny you all want to have with it or, you know, exactly how I, you I see it. both sides of mm -hmm. I see changing the orders to allow certain things, and I understand that. I also see the conditional use permit for let's say things are not covered. Um, but I also see a lot of gray areas in there. Um, and I'm trying to think specifically, say you limit the amount of traffic, which is part of what we put in there, that can come to that particular residence over a certain period of time, say daily. Well, at what point does it become too much? And who makes that call? That's why I don't, I, the less gray area we have, I think the better off we are. Mm -hmm. I would rather see more, uh, more like when someone requests a variance on zoning, where I, where I as administrator say, I'm sorry, we can't do that based on these rules. And they say, we can't <coughs> request a variance. And then it goes to the planning or whatever, and, and it's heard that way. And we may not get two a year, I don't know, you know. But I see more and more of that going on, and I also see a lot of it that has been going on, and it's never been an issue. So, like you were talking about, that someone that teaches me how to do home, I mean, nobody's going to say anything about that, but it is a business. And so they should get a business license yeah. if they are earning. And I, I just don't know how far you, you go with something like that. Um, this whole thing started, as y'all know, with someone needing to conduct internet business. So no traffic, no, maybe a delivery once a week, and just real low key, everything on the line. That's what started this whole discussion. So, which I think most of us would agree is not a problem. At what point does it become a problem? And who makes the call? That's what I'm seeing. Well, and right now, at the way it's written, R1 
zoning that is not permitted. Yes. See, that's the thing, it is not permitted. But the problem is we've got some already in. Oh, right. I think we need to find it uh, somewhere in the middle of it. You know, I just don't want us to bog down on, on this stuff. That's all I have, unless anyone has any questions. I, I do have a question going along with what the town manager said. What legally, what extent legally can the governing body go to with the present circumstances by law when we suspect that people are running their downspouts, their sump pumps through our sources? And I need to look at that research again. I know I've done that research, so it, you know, it shouldn't be too hard for me to put my hands on, but specifically offhand, I don't know, but I'll certainly let you on it. Yeah. So. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Running the sump pump wire? Down through the drain that would go into the sewer system, you see. So when you get the deluge of rain, uh -huh. That it goes down, of course, some pumps go cut on, and instead of it being pumped out into the yard, in some cases is what they're okay. what he was talking, okay, it's, it's being okay. it's being pumped into mm -hmm. the source system and see that that causes then mm -hmm. yes. And and that and those of you who are on council back in I want to say 2005, 2006 when we had been um, uh, charged a, a fine by DEQ, they allowed us to open up an account and we advertised and advertised, I think it was around 60,000 plus. They wanted to penalize us and the mayor at that time spoke very, you know, very eloquently of how, you know, if, if they could, if we could put the money back in the community, it would do more help than the, the DEQ just taking the fine. And they allowed us to set aside in an account for a certain length of time, and that's what the town manager was talking about, that a lot of people did take advantage, you know, that was able to pay their bill. But now that fund is gone. I mean, it was used up and all, so we do not have that way of, of but, the, but everybody in town, west and east, had that opportunity and it ran for something like two years at least and all that before you know things so that but it would be the disconnect or some pump disconnect a lot of hidden gutters that then go down under the house down into the sewer system as opposed to being draining out in the yard so that it goes down stormwater drains and all i i am saying this correctly okay i don't want to well some pumps too and you have, to, you have to think about this a little bit. Some pumps is usually an after the event situation because it has had, has to have time to seep in the ground. And those of us who have basements <coughs> may have some pumps even understand exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, what we had the other day was three three basic causes, and that's stormwater, uh, which can also be wet weather ditches, uh, downspouts, which we have houses that actually have their, their rain downspouts going into the ground, into the sewer system. There's a rush of water, is what, what I'm saying here. And uh, what was the third? Stairwells. Stairwells. Stairwell drains. Yeah, and that's where I was talking about the sump pumps. Outside, you know, mm -hmm. the old steps that go down mm -hmm. into your basement have, have a drain. And they're connect, a lot of them are connected to the sewer system. And they, you just would not believe the amount of water that goes in there. And so how do you fix it? You know, you say, well, I got a problem. What am I supposed to do? Back when we were paying for it, we would pay for them to plug that basement drain or that stairwell drain and install a sump pump, pump it out in the ditch. So that's what we ask people to do that were connected. And you'd go to a house and you'd say, I need to look at your sump pump. And it, honestly, you know, if you've known somebody for 30 years, and a lot of us have, and they say, my sump pump's not connected to the sewer system. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir, appreciate it, and we move on. And as I told Sally, it's, that's a good thing and a bad thing. Because if we had somebody else 
actually doing the consultant, say we had a consultant going door to door that didn't know this particular person, he said, well, I'm sorry, sir, I hear what you're saying, but I got to see it. I've got to see it with my own eyes where it's going. Uh, they may not even know that it goes into the sewer system. You know. So that's the problem that we, that we ran into. And when they smoke test and they and they take off the lid, the the, uh, the sewer cover and they put the the, the smoke device, I call it a bomb, but it's not. It is a bomb. Okay, the smoke bomb <laughs> in there. If you have a a drain in your basement. And it's connected to the sewer system now because they're putting the smoke into the sewer system. Any place that comes out other than your toilet or your up your your vent on your thing yes. is it means that there is a connection there so water can go through that should not be going through. The smoke can come out or water can go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And basically we said we saw laterals going all the way up to people's houses and smoke just pouring out of the road. And that's on private property. And it's an expensive fix. It's a problem. You know, you're looking at two thousand dollars to replace a ladder, and that's where we had the problem. And uh, we all understand that that's where a lot of the problem is. But if we could get to a, somewhere where we could control, it, which I feel like we might, have, we might be at that point with infiltration, but we've still got this inflow issue under certain situations, and that was that was unusual. And uh, we don't get that that often, but we've had that in the past. Uh, Isabel comes to mind, and we had a lot of trouble then. And well, this this was the first time it's happened since we began the project. So it, again, it was a good test to see what's going on out there. And while it's discouraging, it, it proves before we finished and signed off on everything, it's still got an issue. So we've got to figure it out. Is it an overflow? Or uh, something else? Yeah. yeah, well the system is flooding. The sewer system is flooding under that type of situation. And it's fast and it goes away fast. So pretty much when you put rain in and the levels, I'm, I'm envisioning some wet weather ditch that's flooding, you know, and then it drops back down. Our problem is not that day. So I think it's a connection on the storm drain. Um, I don't think it's downspouts per se. I know we've got some, uh, but we didn't find that many when we smoked before. Not near as many as we thought we would find. And a lot of them we did find were correct. And those are easy. You just cut the pipe off, cut the gutter off, and put the elbow on it, and seal it off. And uh, take care of it something big and it's fast and we just <clears throat> and close to the pump station. So that's another thing. It and it's on one so side of town. Yeah. yeah, it's on one side of town. I mean, I know it sounds strange, but the next forecasted rain event that we have, we're actually, in, we may get you guys to help. <clears throat> we're going to sit out in manholes in the east end and just watch it. <laughs> And if you're sitting there watching and the manhole starts to flow fast, then at least you know from which direction it's coming. And it's a simplistic way of looking at it. But if, if anything we can do to try to find the rest, that's what we can do. Well, that, that creek over on the west end is usually two or three inches deep for the seven, eight foot deep. Yeah. yeah, like I said, it was, I've never seen it. But that, was, like, but that wasn't the side that all filled up. That was the thing, because that was my concern. Yeah, right. Wasn't that side of the there, there are problems in the West End. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. But the majority of our problems right now in the East End, if we can resolve them, as you all know, then we can work on the West End and get control of the situation. Uh, D, DQ has been, we've been uh, patient. They've been tolerant. They've got a vested interest now. in their financing half of this project and um, we did not hear any feedback from the two overflows that I mentioned, uh, which typically would. Well, they know we're working on it, but they also know that we still got an issue. And I think they'll help us. I think they'll help us figure that out. So. But we need cooperation from the public. We do. 
we, we, you know, it's, it's like town tags or anything else. If we all would do our part, then we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have to have patrols or all that. You know, I know that's a perfect world, but, but it complicates things. You know, it's not just the overflows. It's treating of the rainwater, too. The, the thousands and thousands of gallons of rainwater that we have to treat at the plant that costs just as much in chemicals as normal sewage flow. We will save money uh, in chemicals if we can see in the system. Right? And, um, and you're not going to solve it 100%. I've, I've learned that over the years. In a perfect world, it should be a sealed system. But it, it just doesn't work that way, and nobody has a sealed system. But you've got to get where you can manage it. Any more questions for the town attorney? Any more comments? Okay, moving on to committee reports. We'll start with economic development. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, very briefly, the economic development committee had a uh, extended meeting because we combined our Ju uh, July and August meetings into one. Uh, we talked for the first hour about uh, the uh, zoning ordinance and then uh, projects moving forward. Uh, the one project that we'll be working on specifically between now and the end of the year is the informational pamphlet on the town via demographics, the economics, all of that that we can hand out to potential businesses or uh, individuals who may want to move into, uh, into the town. Something uh, easy, easily readable and, and, uh, and attractive. The next uh, EDC meeting will be on Wednesday, September 2nd at noon at Dining Crew. Uh, for the next regular council meeting, I will likely have the tourist plan uh, that was established uh, with comments from the Economic Development Committee and everything else for council's review and hopeful approval. Uh, I may try to get that to you beforehand so that you have it in your packets to review the weekend prior to the meeting. Uh, just a couple events coming up. Um, Centra Southside, the, uh, our local hospital, is having a uh, grand opening on August the 30th from 4 to 6. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce is having a chicken fundraiser on September the 5th, Bill? Yeah. September 5th. Uh, see Bill or me or uh, Tammy Blevins to order some, uh, some chicken. Uh, and the last thing, uh, no update yet on that Heal grant that we applied for. Still waiting to hear back from them. They said beginning of August, it's now almost mid-August. So we'll see. Any questions for the Economic Development Chairperson? Okay, finance, sir. Finance, appreciate Thank you. Okay, public works infrastructure. Uh, we don't have any way through what's coming out of this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, personnel. Well, I'd like to thank the um, police department for a successful night out Saturday. Um, I understand there were 400 food packages. And yes, they ran and ran out, so ran that out. means there were more than 400 people. That's right. wonderful. I know everybody worked real hard, especially probably Beverly and Ellen. Which, uh, um, it's a wonderful event, and I hope more and more people will attend. And um, Wade, thank you for all the work you've done on this water situation. I know we'll get to the end of it, and it's hard work. I hope we do. I'm looking forward to being bored. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? That's all. Okay, any questions for the personnel? Okay, moving on to public safety. I don't have a report on the fact that we're twice a mayor, still some sense like that. And I, have, I, I enjoyed myself. E.B., <laughs> you still got some good moves to be 62 years old. <laughs> 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 I seen you over at that DJ. Did you get that? You go pay 62? 62? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know there's two comments and one right behind the other. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I would like to see 62 again. <laughs> But I enjoyed myself. I thought it was very eventful that the town was well represented and the public enjoyed themselves. And 
And and the police had these good dance moves. Oh, yeah. I said, I, one of those they were doing, I said, I believe I could do that. <laughs> it was something about stomping your fears. The macaroni thing, I never could get that straight. <laughs> the only one I didn't see having a real good dance move is sitting at the same table wheel. You wouldn't. But I enjoy it. That's all I like. It was. They need to work on that donut contest. <laughs> you think we'd have that lit? If if you all did not watch her, this this is first time I've this close. But she's very professional about her. <laughs> and you get down and you cannot use your hands. And so she took, it ended up looking like a scallop. It was a perfect work of art. But she took one bite and moved it, one bite all the way around. The, of course, she didn't win, but it was very good. Well, the object was for the children. I know. <laughs> and I got, I got a, somebody took a video of that. And I got that this oh, morning. Funny. It beat down on my it really But it's is. fun. It it's, was, fun. it's all in fun. And, and I just laugh. Uh, moving on, uh, community development. Uh, the, uh, we had <laughs> another, maybe a little setback when uh, Kelly Lewis had left for um, another position. But I've been bragging on this group that it's such a well-oiled machine. And that means that it will go on with maybe a little hitch. But I didn't want to try to call her because this has all just happened. And so I'll have a better update unless Wade. I have some information. I'll okay, have. good. Has something to say about it. But I would in the future, because we've gotten into it in the timeline, I'd like to have some pictures to perhaps bring to show some of the things. There were huge trees that had to come down and things like that that were on the outside that could be documented and brought in here so y'all could see it. But I'm looking forward to it. Like I said, I don't anticipate any problems as we've been through a lot of things. Mm -hmm. But it is happening, so that's a good thing. Okay, on community development, do you have any questions for her? All right, I'm going to come back to the vice mayor again with the Town of Crew Comprehensive Plan update. Once again, <laughs> you have a new 73 page report. Um, and I do compliment Logan from the Planning Commission's mm -hmm. um, office because she continued to work very hard on getting some things that we had asked her since the last time. Uh, in the new plan that you have, uh, updated one, we've corrected and, and grammatical errors, that sort of thing, it's improved some wording here and there, nothing substantive. Um, the slogan was added to the, uh, the town slogan was added to the explanation of the seal. That's in the very beginning pages. Um, we also uh, corrected, because previously it said the comprehensive plan was um, created by the Planning Commission. Um, we changed that to be prepared by the Crew Town Council with assistance of the Planning Commission. Um, page three, this was a major change. There were some goals stated there that did not match the goals in the plan. So that has been um, changed to reflect this, so that the goals you read in every part of it are the same goals. <laughs> um, you'll notice on page 45, we were able to get um, ITS manufacturing included. Um, in page 46, the Autism Consulting Center is included. Um, and also under the food markets, crew seafood and the Oxcala, um, I'm not saying that right, the Mexican food market, I don't pronounce it right, and the Dollar General have been added as, as well as um, food markets. And as you read it, there are a few other things, but as I say, it's just a matter of wording to make it flow a little better. Um, I thank Councilman Muscovic, who must be a frustrated English teacher. <laughs> but his, his, his notations were very helpful because once you read something a million times, you stop, stop seeing it. <laughs> stop altogether. 
So I'm not sure where we are in the process. Um, I want everybody to know that this is a living document, so even though once something is approved does not mean that um, there can't be additions and so forth along the way. Of course, part of the plan is to update the status at least twice a year so that citizens can see. Um, we will it, it soon have it on um, have the, it on the website so that people can view it and then as it's updated they'll be able to see that. So at this point, um, I don't know if the town manager knows or our attorney knows, is it appropriate for council to approve it in order for it to go to a public hearing or what do we need to do there? If the process is going to a public hearing, then council will need to recommend that a public hearing be advertised. Uh, just a quick thing if we're moving forward with it. Um, the uh, economic development uh, session, um, did you get the uh, new session next? Do you want to, that was my question, do you want to add that whole thing? As, you know, I emailed um, you about, do you want that to be an addendum? Well, the, or? Uh, the plan itself, it's entirely up to you, but then I reworded, re essentially restructured the entire uh, section beginning on page 34. The economy and employment, uh, just to reflect more of what we are dealing with the, with the town versus the generic verbiage that the, that's been used in the past. And I can, uh, I can resend that to you mm -hmm. and to uh, the council. <coughs> it's entirely up to you. I saw that you had crossed things out, but I didn't really see okay, there was a, a new uh, wording. Yeah, it was, it was a word document. I no, I didn't get that. Oh, I must have. I saw the crossed out part, but I think okay. we a new document. Let me, uh, let me resend that to you. Okay. Um, unless you want to move forward, but I don't know. Would we, we be able to amend it? We did have a two-week deadline. So, I mean, we're into... Would we be able to amend it in the public hearing? Good. Yeah, I wouldn't see any problem with recommending a public hearing, you know, to discuss this comprehensive mm -hmm. plan okay. subject to any changes that Perfect. were made. That worked then. Okay. As long as, you know, there was a copy of the comprehensive plan in form file and, you know, the council had the full comprehensive plan and people were able to see that changes. That was Perfect. a question I had. If we have it on Facebook, to where they can go in and read it. If we have it on our website mm -hmm. and all, to where they can go in and read it. And then if we have a copy laying in town hall, would that be sufficient? That should be sufficient, yes. Because it means anybody that has access to the internet could actually, you know, if it's in PDF form or mm -hmm. whatever, you know, can can review it right there. Can we get that entire document on? It would be in PDF form. I mean. It, it wouldn't be every so page. Have to go to the website to see it. Well, no, they just have to okay. have the, the app to open it. Okay. Right. If, uh, if you, uh, people, yeah, the, the county could, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's, it's late. The, uh, if the county could, uh, could send it to me in PDF, I could put it up on the website. I have it on the flash drive. That's mm -hmm. perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because you, and you can also refer them to some place if they <clears> not, the, PDF is not available on their computer where they can download because it's can be right. downloaded free. Oh, it's no it's no cost to, to have the thing to convert right. it. You know, excuse me, upload it I guess. Sure. Unlock it. Absolutely. Okay. Okay, so if you email me that I'll email you that. If you email me anything back, I'll put it up on the, uh, the website. Okay. Would we okay. like to have a motion at this point? I move that we hold a public hearing at our next regular meeting to review and discuss the uh, conference plan. Second? Second. Okay, it has been moved and second that at our September meeting that we begin with a public hearing on um, comments from the town on the town of Cruz comprehensive plan update. 
and that we advertise for the other public. Right. With the adequate advertisement. Okay. All those in favor signify by aye. Aye. Any opposed? Same sign. Okay. We'll have that one. Okay. So we have to advertise two weeks prior to and also in that advertisement let them know where they can read it. Any other comments, questions on this? All right, we'll move right on to the police chief's report. Uh, National Light went well. We may have to look into if it keeps growing like it is, finding a different location at home. We hate to do that because of the playground here. And the playground stayed packed from 4.30 afternoon until 10 o'clock that night. Really don't want to do that. But it's going like it's going, and we may have to take all of this area, which would be a great thing. A good problem. Yes, good problem. The, the turnout, the response is just overwhelming. The people that appreciate it, and having to have that one-on-one -on -one contact with, with citizens in a positive light, not always in the, the negative sense. It's, it's great for us. We enjoy Beverly and Gallo. They did 99% of the legwork work one this year. They did not announce any job. Uh, Pop back there, my <laughs> uncle and Mr. Watts, they come out and cook all the food for us, volunteer their time. The whole thing is put on by volunteers. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no taxpayer money involved. All of it's through donations. And the community comes to, together Put on this event. If it wasn't for them, you wouldn't be able to do it. So. It was fun. And people that are able to laugh together. Yes. It's got to be. And to tell you how sharp I am, the cupcakes, I was sitting and looking at it. It took me a while to figure out that it was a softball. And I said, that is cute. That is really cute. But I was saying, gee whiz, really, I don't know if you get any slower. I don't know what's going to happen, but well, it in, was. In your defense, they had melted a little bit. <laughs> it was, it was, but I realized what it was supposed to be. Would you tell, would you tell them some of the sponsors, such as like Southside Electric and all that, that did contribute, Maybe. like Sam's, go ahead. Uh, well, yeah, Southside Electric, they sponsored the, um, be careful because some people don't want to be named. Right, right, Southside right. Southside Electric, yeah. they sponsored the Bouncy House. Uh, Sands Club let us borrow uh, eight burner grill. It's beautiful. Well. Yeah. Uh, all we had to do is go pick it up and bring it back. And we may be able to get one given to us through a grant through them now mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. of this. For National Night Out, of course, we do something mm -hmm. before Christmas. Um, mm -hmm. So many Sigma. perks, they give us drinks. But you also had, you, you had Madeline House, the, the, some of the booths. The vendors. Yeah, the vendors there. that were there too. That, that um, yeah. really, you know, a plus to the community. Mm -hmm. Fire department. Mm -hmm. Fire department. Rescue squad. The victims, witness protection, funding thing. Right. <laughs> a little bit out there, yeah. I can't, I can't remember the, the name of the name for it, but uh, there was several. ASAP was here. Probably on guard, man. We're ready for that. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it, it just was so wonderful. I think each year I have seen more and more of the community join in. And it was neat when the music was going, because over the years I had seen maybe the children get out there and dance, mm -hmm. or some of the girls get out there and dance. And this time it was moms and dads and the children, and all. it just and, and and great music, sir. It just it 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 was a very nice event, and all. And, and I know it's hard work, but um, it just to me, I look at what when I look on the news tonight and see what's happening in other parts of the country. It just made me really feel grateful to have a night out where you all host it. 
you all host it and open it up to everybody, and I just think that's fantastic, you know. Yeah, I believe about uh, that this may have different. Don't you think it's an investment that you're going to see? See the little ones, this little one, out there dancing, football, and having a great time. And so when they grow up, this is also a state of mind for them all. So I think it's really good. Do you have any other reports? Um, I'm going to Last council meeting, I talked about Free North, who had come in to talk to us about plans and possibly the cost of a new police department. I said I would try to have a report for you guys this council meeting. It's not ready. We've been talking with them back and forth. They want to make sure they get it right for us. Again, they're going to do this for us at, at no cost. So maybe by next council meeting I'll have something to give you a better idea of what we're looking for and what it costs. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, another great uh, uh, initiative from the from the police department is that uh, app that we're now taking part in, some sort of cell phone app. Tell us an email. Um, I forget the uh, the name of it. Um, something like helping hands. Uh, na neighbor. Yes. Neighbor yes. something. Na right. Neighbor. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I, I think that might be worth a uh, uh, presentation on. Okay. Just so the community knows what it is and we get introduced and we start using it. Definitely. Definitely. But that, uh, I think it's in a trial run now, so once we get it up and running, perfect. we'll definitely do that. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Finally, I think we have a pretty good hold on the library here and the playground. The, the amount of activity here has been reduced dramatically. We don't have complaints like we were having. I've noticed, you know, I live right down the road, so I come by here any time I go to town or go anywhere. And I've noticed that the field out here is being used more for football, and frisbee, and I've even seen some, some kids out playing soccer, and not the hangout <coughs> around the front and around the sides. And I've seen several families utilizing the playground over there. So the, the extra enforcement that we that we've been doing it, I think has made a big difference on it and we can we're gonna to start to maybe dial it back just a hair. But we, we still need to keep it in check. Because as soon as we give an inch they'll probably protect it. But I think we've got a pretty good handle on it now. Do you have any comments on school starting? And buses? I can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, school starts Monday. And one of the problems we were having was here at the library, we were having 25, 30 kids get on the school bus here or get off the school bus. The mayor and I had a meeting with Dr. Bernard and I always forget her name, Nancy. Wallace, Ms. Nancy Wallace. Wallace. Mm -hmm. And we're going to work together to try to take care of that problem. We found out that. Kids were coming from as far as Kyle Trailer Court or Custis Street. Frank Froome over here dropping them off on the catch of us here. But we're going to try to put a stop to it from day one this mm -hmm. year with the help from the school. And, uh, I think when we got to talking with Mr. Bernard and Ms. Wallace, there was actually five to six five kids six. that should have been getting on the bus here and getting off the bus here. And mm -hmm. there's no exaggeration, there was every bit of 25 to 30. So if we can get that under control right off the bat, then I'll we'll take care of that problem after school. And it was no way to reflect trying to stop someone from using the library for study or for reference and all because they were not going in the library, they were walking and they were crossing 460 where if they had an accident and got hit. That could, you know, and they were supposed to get off the bus on the opposite side of her. That, that could really, you know, cause a, a bad situation for the county and our town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Katie, questions for the police chief? <clears throat> okay. My report. Since Steve is not here tonight, I'll go over a few things. Usually, I, he and I have the same things down. First, um, starting with, I'm going to start into the month a little bit back the all-star Dixie youth. 
uh, teams, the, the three girls teams and all. We had a nice celebration Saturday night. We ha were all invited to the, um, the uh, pep rally. Um, the, um, and I wanted to tell Steve how much I appreciate on behalf of the town having the town of Crewe selected for the Virginia tournament because I just think that brought a, an influx of people into our town that helped us economically also gave our town just a wonderful setting. I, I just thought that, you know, that it just brought that home community setting to our town. I, and I know it took so many, so many sponsors, so many people that had to volunteer, you know, to run this. And, and I, as a town, I'm very appreciative of that. Um, wanted to again to thank the citizens who work so hard in night out and the police and I, it was good to see you all at, at, at um, night out. I, I just, you know, to me it's, it's one of it you just don't want to miss it at all possible because it's such a, a community effort. I do have a little update to add to um, uh, Shirley's uh, information on Stratton and Lipscomb. When we had the meeting, um, I think, Shirley, you were on vacation when they had the meeting. And I was going to tell you the homes on um, 304 on Stratton at the July meeting uh, was 50% completed. The uh, 300 Stratton was 50% completed. 501 Lipscomb was 45% completed. 302 Lipscomb, they were going to begin on July 27th. 209 on July um, 20th, and um, there were going to be two um, houses that were going to be demolished, and they were looking to get those under contract, and that was 208 and 212 Lipscomb. And uh, when they got all the bids in, it was right exciting because they had a little money left over that they didn't think on. It's a two-phase project, mm -hmm. so they didn't realize they're going to, so they are, are looking to maybe be able to do another home, and they will have the home chosen at our August meeting, so that's right exciting. And they're drawing for the funds as they are going, mm -hmm. they're drawing, okay. Right, and um, I went by there today, and I took some neat pictures when you go down, you oh, can you see the new good. porches. Good. And um, stairways and all that. Um, you know, I'm really excited for the people. And here again, anytime one home is improved, it also improves my home and your home because it brings all of our values up. When one ha when one home is falling down, it affects each one of us. So it's a win-win situation. On my on my eyes, it might not be in everybody's eyes, but I think it's a win-win situation for the whole town. Okay. Okay. One, um, one of the things that has been newsworthy that I wanted to show you, to tell you about, and it was to start tonight, and this was going to be put on by um, the, um, the government, not, not a way, I guess I should say the federal government, not, not a way, and not Blackstone, um, but August 10th through the 12th on um, FESCO, they were to have a, um, a community planning workshop, and it was for the town of Blackstone and Nottaway County. And uh, when I talked to Mr. Procise, I received an invitation, and I believe that the mayor from Burkle received an invitation. I wanted to explain to you all why you all maybe did not uh, receive one. What they wanted to do is, is so that if he and I were there, then we could bring the information mm -hmm. back to you. But to include um, the uh, county and Blackstone in this. Uh, if you're aware of what has happened on the news, there was, I'll call it a moratorium, put on uh, as of um, Monday. So um, this has been postponed till um, I think it's a two month period that they are having to work some things out. And when I'm saying they, Washington is having to work some things out and all on um, it. So, but I wanted to let you know that if you had a question, you know, we did, I was invited, I was signed up to go, and I have received a note from the county that said that, um, that it's postponed postponing the planning, uh, the community planning workshop originally scheduled for next week, but they emphasized that it was being postponed. Um, one of the things that if you've looked in your boxes that is coming up that um, 
uh, is the um, Not Away Celebrates the Family. I think it's in all your boxes. I think we have them up. I think we have it on the website and all. That's Saturday, August 29th from noon to 6 up at Hooper Park. Uh, the Kingdom Community Church and crew is um, putting this on. Uh, it is a good family event and all. And if you see your neighbors and all, they have young children and all. You know, let them let them know that that it is um, being held, and um, it's free food. We all like free food, <laughs> and um, it, it's for families. Um, the other thing, um, Labor Day, tentatively, the Veterans uh, Memorial is, and I'm saying tentatively. They called me, they and they said it was tentatively, but the dedication they are hoping to hold on Memorial Day at 10 o'clock. So uh, if, uh, if you are planning to be home at that time and all, if you'll keep that uh, on open so that you can come over. It's been, it's been a long process, but a very worthwhile process, and I can't think of a better way to, you know, for us to show our appreciation to those who have given so much as, you know, this. And, and I think, Phil, you had talked to them, too. They really want this to be... A very localized. A local, right. Yeah, right. I, I no. offered you uh, to reach out, but they... They want the focus to be, and rightfully so, on the uh, on the veterans and the uh, and the individuals being memorialized. Right, which right. Which is a very nice, uh, very nice thing. Okay. And then, um, here, uh, you know, Val um, was with us last um, meeting, uh, our fire chief, and September nineteenth. If you got that date open, I'll try to keep it open. The Southside Virginia Volunteer Fire Association will be up at Cooper Park for their uh, convention. It, it's a lot of fun, and, and when I'm saying it, I'm saying this to, to everybody in our community. Normally, they have a parade. I uh, finally found my pictures from the last time, and I gave them to Beverly, that she had made a, uh, a copy for the, the uh, fire department, but they usually have a parade that comes down through town, and these are all the, the counties and all that participate, and they have their fire engines and all. And then they set up at Hooper Park. And it, it is the neatest thing to see in the competition. That, uh, and they all gear around the activities that they need to do in order to keep us safe and to save our lives in a fire and to keep themselves safe. And, it, and it's competition. And I ask, well, how did we end up being able to, you know, be the host place? And it's because that whoever is the president, the elected president, of that con, and so um, crew was chosen because the uh, person that is the chairperson is <laughs> in crew. So if we can keep that on the calendar, those of, and I just sound like a little commercial. <coughs> those of you who get the Southside Electric uh, little um, cooperative living, you'll see that that our railroad museum. Jerry Fuller got called Jeff, but at least it, <laughs> it's, it's in here. So um, the, um, it's always nice to see some publicity, some very positive publicity on what, you know, these, and, the, and this with all the volunteers. And all. Again, let me also thank the employees of the town who have worked so hard through all that rain. And um, Tony, who comes to all the meetings, I know he's not here, but if, if, if you knew the diligence that our employees go through to try and, and from way on that that try to see that things are done correctly and especially you know with, with the contractors and the engineers and all all the eyes and all that are out there to try to make sure that, that we get things right because we're using your money and our money and with the monies we bought monies from across the United States to pay for this we, we want to get the value for our money Quite. Any questions for me? Okay. All right. New business. Uh, very quickly, Mayor. Um, we, uh, if, depending on how it was uh, how it was done, we should probably formalize uh, the uh, donations that we made uh, through through uh, unless it was just simply taken out of a, out of an existing budget. The uh, donation to the CBYRA and then the advertisement to. For the uh, radio advertisement for the yeah, for the oh, that will come, come out of recreation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did it all just come out of a okay? Yeah. Well, that's that's perfect. Yeah, no recreation, no food. Okay, perfect. 
Uh, and then my only other new business, uh, VML conference is coming up again. I encourage everyone to go. It's actually in Richmond this year. So we can all carpool if we, if we so desire and come back. Um, it's October 4th through 6th in, uh, in the city. So if anyone wants to go, let me know. Okay. We have not received. Have we received a packet on that? I, I, because I, I try to. I've got an email, but that's okay. it's just their preliminary okay. email. Okay, I was going to say because I usually try to keep that out right. so in case anybody needs to see it. Okay. Any other new business? Okay, continuing business. The first thing that I had on there was about the the forestry grant update in case we had to make some decisions, but at this point we don't quite know what we are needing to just to decide on. So. Um, you all have any input in it? I open the table. Right, we can move on. Okay, I put down the zoning, the zoning ordinance changes in residential area one. I didn't know if any uh, any more uh, questions, comments, motions on that. Okay, council, do you have any other continuing business? Uh, wait, were you able to? And it was my fault for not getting that contact information sooner, but get in um, touch with the uh, DMV? Not yet. Okay, that's fine. Not sure. that, like I said, that was. I dropped the ball on that one. I did it in the Perfect. Okay. All right. Now, again, we'd like to open up to our audience here, the public, any comments that you may have? Yes, sir. I have one, uh, well, not really a comment, I'd just like some information. When a person moves into town, how do they know when they're either renting or buying what zone they are in? Well, that they ask. <laughs> well, that they're stupid, they don't ask. Well, That's they don't stupid. ask, and nobody tells them they don't need to know. Huh? Okay, you say they don't have to know. Now all of a sudden there's a knock on your door, we understand you're running a business. Well, my business is registered in New Jersey, paying New Jersey taxes, but I have a computer that links to New Jersey. There's a situation. I'm also paying sales tax in Virginia and New Jersey. So where does that put me? Puts me on the drawing board for the attorney to think about. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm drawing right now. <laughs> well, that's, yeah. You're right, and that's yeah. kind of what I was talking about earlier, that there's, there will be situations yeah. where... I have no one that comes to my house. Yeah. No one. But you have a business at home. I have a computer a with a business card. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I pay town tax. I pay county tax. <laughs> You, you know, on the, the pamphlet that economic development wants to get together, that would be one thing Absolutely. too to put to put a map of the. Uh, and we do have a map. Yeah. It's color coded and very nice, very pretty. Uh, if we can maybe get a get copies of those for when people do come in to get the water turned on, just to have it out there, say, hey, this is where your house is. Make sure you know. I mean, we're I don't, just, just don't open up a pamphlet so people, uh, people can look at it. Mm -hmm. But at this point, now I'm concerned. Any other public comments? I think you're in an R2 and you're allowed to have it. I don't know where the I don't know where I'm at. <laughs> I know I live in 106 Cable Street. That's all. I That's all you have to know. <laughs> okay. Um, may I have a motion for adjournment? Okay. May I have a second? Second. It has been moved and seconded that we adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you.